I told him that September coming, I will move him because I already paid the school fee, $10,500. So September, I will move him. And the other day I asked him, because I was the other talking about bullying at school and stuff, and I asked him if anybody is bullying him at school, and he said no. Irwin High School student stabbed to death by a schoolmate. A 15-year-old student of Irwin High School in St. James is dead after he was stabbed by another student on Thursday, April 18. The deceased has been identified as Raniel Plummer, a resident of Point District in the parish. It is reported that Raniel and a 14-year-old boy had an altercation at school. About 3 p.m., Raniel was approached by the same student along with a group of boys who attacked him outside the school gate. During the altercation, a knife was used to stab Raniel in the chest. He died while being treated in hospital. Where can I cannot explain how I feel. I feel like I want to die. Raniel is a very quiet person, friendly, helpful. He doesn't talk a lot and he loves football and loves riding bicycle. He's my little helper around the house. Your first child? No, ma. Worked. But he is so helpful. Everything we just call him. Raniel, take us some water. Raniel, come wash up for me. Raniel, 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 Raniel. And he always is welcome. You ever mention he get bullied at school? No. He said to me early on this year, said that he wanted to move from her. Yeah, yeah, you never told him why he wanted to move? No. I told him that September coming, I will move him because I already paid the school fee, $10,500. So September, I will move him. And the other day I asked him, because I was the other talking about bullying at school and stuff, and I asked him if anybody is bullying him at school, and he said no. But maybe he didn't want to tell me because he, he don't love to make complaint. Do you remember how you found out about the incident? I got a call. I was at work and I got a call. A taxi driver said that he's taking my son to the hospital with two of his classmates because my son said a boy stabbed him in his chest with a knife. Have you heard anything from the, from the school? It administration and administrators themselves as yet? Well, last night when we were up by the Salem, Mount Salem police station, the dean of discipline, he came up there and he was up there with me, with the police and stuff. But I haven't heard anything else from no principal. I didn't get a call from the school, no teacher, nobody. He came into my room for his lunch money and he said, Mommy, have a wonderful day at work today. And I said, have a wonderful day at school and he left. We are devastated because I lost my father in December. I lost my brother in February and now I lose my son. And I don't know how am I going to live without my, my son. I don't know how I'm going to manage without my son at this house. Yeah. I don't want to live in this house anymore. Because I can't imagine live, living without Raniel. It's like my heart, I'm breathing and, and I am still alive, but I'm dead. My heart come out of my body. When the doctor him, tell me they couldn't save him, they do everything they could. But they couldn't save him because the knife went down too deep in his heart. How are his siblings coping? They are not coping very well. They are not coping very well. Because nobody expects this. Because Rani is not a trouble. Rani is not a troublemaker. I never get called to come to Irwin school for say Rani do something bad. Whenever I go to the school for a report or stuff, every teacher has something good to say about Rani. Every teacher. Yesterday, I think two of the teachers that teach over there came up there in the night and one of them that is not teaching there anymore. A coach? Yes. Was did he play sports? Football. He loved football. He was on the football team over there. 
a matter of fact, he, he, I think he was second in command on the football team. What grade was he in? Nine. He was playing football from her in primary school. So then they used to have this thing over there in the summer holidays, some camping thing that he went. And he even come third in that thing over there. So whenever they go to play football, they always carry because they call him maestro. I don't really know what that means, but the, the coach call him maestro. And sometimes when they call and ask me, and I said, no, the coach said, oh, God, we lose now. And sometimes he beg me and I say, okay, because he loves football. I say, okay, you can go on. Outside of him being helpful, can you describe the relationship you shared with Ranil? Ranil, I love all of my kids. But Ranil is very loving. Ranil, he, he just come and rub my head. Or just come and hug up me and put his head on my shoulder. And say, mommy, you all right? He's, if if he pass me and my face look away, he ne come back and ask me, mommy, your face look so. You sad? Um, you want your head to hurt you? You want the alcohol? You want some water? That's all I need to stay. And if he come back and he see me look away, he come back and he ask me, Mommy, you sure you're all right? You stress? Something may bother you? That's what Rani is. Rani is a very loving person. And I don't know why somebody would want to kill my son. Take away my son from me. Stab my son in my heart. Okay. One stab in my heart. That means he may want to kill my son. That's the only way you stop someone that they hurt when you want to kill them. And your neighbor said Ranil's dad died as well? Yes, eight years ago. It, it, and uh, Ranil have a smaller brother, the two of them is one father. So, Gavin lost his father and now he lost his brother. How old is Gavin? 11 years old. He went, he's going to her in primary. But oh, that's the little one we saw around here earlier? Y yes. How is he coping? He's not coping very well. I'm going to take him to the doctor later on in the day because he's not talking. He's just not talking. He's not and he's just like everyone pandong all over the place. Going around the house. This made me seem gone through this. So then he come back to years and me call him and just come and he not talk. And he not eat nothing at all. So I for bring him to the doctor. Up here so I'm riding bicycle and he love football. It's good, typical job like any other little young man. But in my, in my is a very rough person. Because sometimes I wonder, I say, if my grandson did have a person like Stacy, he misbehaves sometimes. But Ranil is not like that. Ranil is a, is, a, is a leader. He's not a follower. And a pit you can draw out and tell him, come do this and come do that and he follow you. You understand? He has to find his own mind. He do what he knows good. He knows say if he do anything and he mother come. The consequence goes face it. You understand? The mother try to grow them good. You understand? And without a father, she tried very best. And the father died when he was a black around six or seven. Two of them, and the other one maybe was around two or so. And she tried her best with them. And if you see, she had tried with them so hard, and now send them to school. You come to sleep last night, you have to hope with her, and this one we have to come back with her again. Because she, she try hard and she works so hard for them. How does the community feel though? No, man, it's everybody sad, man. Everybody sad because I don't want to allow somebody to get a problem. The, the little boy is not a problem boy. You understand? And he, you know, talk that much. Everybody know him. And he, do you know? I come in the picnic, come to church, he come to celebration, I mean, come to church. Celebration, church? Yes. Oh. The sister come to church. The sister was a member of our church and they used to come. The mother comes sometimes too. When the mother not come, may I pass right to some live. She called me, she give me her tithe. And we carry go to church. So I pick them up, come to church. Not very every Sunday, but they come to church. Sometimes the mother, mother, sometimes they're alone. I know, I know, pick them one out harder. So if things are going on at the school, we're not telling mother about. She can't be blamed for that. You understand? But in the community, a good picnic. I know people have a problem with nobody or you know, get a problem with me. Ronnie was a young man who loved football from basic school coming up. He grew up through that basic school. So he rushed with us sometimes. Sometimes coming from Montego Bay, I saw him on the road in the dust up. I pick him up, drop him here just to get him safe. 
And so what I would like to see happening in this country is that I don't know if the government can implement some form of program to see that these children after school, some police can really, or soldier can really convey these routes to see that they catch bus. Either to want to be a catch bus to their places of hope or safety. Because what is happening in our country today is it seems as if the devil let out. I can't say more because look what is happening around our island. It is too much. And so we are now calling on God. We are calling on the Godhead that operates and run the universe to intervene in the minds of our children. Because where do these children get weapons from? We have security at these schools. But these young people are so smart. They will carry their instruments and they will hit it and they will attack. And then they are farming small groups. And then you don't have anyone to say well, they don't do it. We have phones these days that everybody wants to have an iPhone and every little thing, social media reach it. And then people believe what they saw, but we don't hear the other side of the story. We don't know the other side of this young man. His friend is at home because I understand that if he did go to school, might be it would have been worse. He said he didn't want to go to school and the mother did not allow him to go to school. The mother was here crying early on, say he would have died too. So I don't know what happened at the school, but it is not easy. It's sad. Yeah. What did Rennie want to be when he grew A footballer. Otherwise, he said he wants to be a computer engineer. He love love computer, and he love to fix things. If your your fan break down, he fix it. Any little thing, he fix. He love fix things. Anybody hear anything about any young violence or anything like that? Any warrior or anything? No. Not that out of the ordinary. I never expect this. Never ever expect nothing like this. And because when you don't get trouble, when you don't love to fight. As a matter of fact, I grow my kids them to don't love to fight. And maybe that's why what happened to Ronnie happened to him. Because maybe if men grow him to fight, love fight. And feet and stuff like that, but he's not like that. Even my smaller son, he they no love fight. My daughter, I have a daughter, she's 18 years old today. So it's her birthday. Oh, she, wow. she go to come see college. And she never fight. From she got basic school, primary school, high school, and she never ever fight. The kids don't love fight. The daughter going to school today? Yes, because she have a presentation that she has to do, so she has to go. So Rani no love fight. None of them no love fight like that. I always tell Rani, say Rani, if somebody step on your foot, you tell that person sorry. And I always tell him when nothing happened at school with children or other kids, find an adult, find a teacher, find a counselor, find somebody. And that is why he went to the, the lady yesterday and lodged a complaint that um lunchtime. That's what I heard. What lady that comes at the school? Yes. About persons? Um, yes, the, about the boys. The said boy that stabbed him. Because in the lunchtime, I hear that they, they jape him up. So but that's the time that he go to the lady and make a report. But the lady do not do nothing about it. So, they wait, they lay with him after school, out by the gate, and stab him. What I can say for Stacy, it is heavy and her now. Because her brother died, and I know some of the pressure is on her. He's that cut yet, so there's not a plan for the funeral. But she said he will be buried over in Chatsworth. I don't know. And what come to my mind this morning, where is Stacey going to bury her name? This is my question. I ask, where? And the father die. The father mm. gets shot. You see, it's not nice. It's not nice. And I am praying. I am praying for this community and I hope to go from all stores. It was yesterday I was at a home, visit with a young lady and son mine. She wants a two room in Canada. Canada. And, I, and said, I said, why you want two room in Canada? Canada? Everybody wants to leave Jamaica to make a better life. I said, Canada is not better than Jamaica. But for what is happening around us? And I just want to send a message to our politicians. They need to conduct themselves better in the House of Parliament. Because we are a generation of people, we never, we come out of Africa, yes. 
and come to Jamaica. But we think we can be develop our country better and to show our young people that there is hope. Look how Jamaica is beautiful. And yet, what is happening in our House of Parliament? I think these are some of the things that try and um, reach the mind of our people or some of our young people in society and causes all of this because they are just restless. And it makes me wonder what causes it. And the next thing I want to know that the government done for us allow us to go into these schools that you can do devotions whether in the morning or somewhere there the principals can allow us to go into these schools and to mentor some of these young people because these young people don't go to sabbath school anymore they don't go to sunday school anymore some parents don't have no affiliation with churches and i know that church play one of the greatest role in every society because jesus said the man who built a foundation without him someday it will fall apart.